Welcome to another segment of Provocative Conversations, destined to provoke further thought and spark greater questions regarding God, church, and the religious establishments of both the past and the present. I am the proud heretic, Mr. Provocateur himself. Hello, I am the proud heretic, Mr. Provocateur, also known by my social media podcasting sites as the ordained heretic. Don't get that word mixed up, church. Don't think that because I call myself a heretic because you all would label me as such and have labeled me as such. Don't get it twisted. I more than likely know more of that Bible than you. (laughs) Trust you me. (laughs) And then I know how to accurately use it, unlike most of the church. And those of you who do know how to use it, you do a terrible job at it. You do it for filthy gain filthy lucre you do it because you have hidden motives your intentions are not pure but that's something further down the line in some other teachings hello church hello world this is my post election words to the church Today is November the 9th, but it takes hours to just edit one particular. Some people don't care what they put out there. I do. Some people don't care regarding the not so well, the content as well. But with me, not so much the content, but the accurateness of the content and the how would I say I. I want to use the word professionalism, but that's not a good word. Why? Because what you may call professional, I do not. And what I may call professional, you surely do not. You may feel that it's not professional for me to say some of the words that I say. But I think it proper when it's in its proper time and in its proper season. And this is a proper season for a lot of things. So by the time you hear this, it will have already, most of it will have already taken place, but don't get it twisted. This is still good information. Truth does not outdate itself. (laughs) Truth does not outdate itself. Things do, situations do, systems do, as you will find out, church. Systems have their dispensational periods in time. But truth remains consistent throughout time. It is because of truth that time is what it is. (laughs) Time does not determine truth. Truth determines time. (laughs) okay hello church well as you see church we are now in the post era of the election those of you who did not hear my prophetic utterances regarding who this president would be and whether or not president donald trump soon to be former president whether he would win the election. Well, on the prophetic utterances in relation to the United States president and its politicians on number three, podcast number three, directed towards the president of this divided states and its politicians. We could say his politicians because he was daddy Trump to them. God Trump to the church, King Trump to the church. <laughs> the king got trumped. You use it on Trump or King. Well, you can in spades if you got a a deuce. If you playing high hearts, high spades, 
uh, a deuce high heart or deuce high spades or or nah, maybe not high spades on the deuce of spades, a deuce high diamonds, you can trump out a king. Whatever it is, I guess Biden, you can call him the little joker, the big joker. <laughs> if you're playing high deuces, regular deuces, you can call him a deuce of spades. High deuces, you can call him a deuce of hearts or a deuce of diamonds. He trumped out the king. Church, you had your king in your pocket. You had him in your hand. And you were waiting to throw down for another four years. But then God came and overturned the table with a high deuce. <laughs> you would probably call him a joker. Either way, a high deuce trumped him out. You're fired. <laughs> Basically, that's what happened. That's just what happened, church. I know you're sitting now, church, embarrassed as all hell, in which you should be. <laughs> it's funny because you all for four years flooded the Internet, flooded the airways every way you could with all of these prophetic messages about a Donald Trump being a president for four years. And I just kept hearing God say to me, no, no, that's not what it's going to be. Do not listen to them. Do not believe them. Do not listen to what they're saying. God began to tell me, hear what I'm telling you. Hear what I told you. Hear what I said to you. And I told you all back in October in my recording that Donald Trump would no longer be president, that he would not be president, that he would lose his position as president. And God told me that we would receive a new president, a new president, a new president. Then on October the 26th, God said to me clearly, I have it right here. Let me see. Let me go to that piece that I have here. God says in this season, he says, you will have a new president. This is October the 26th. You will have a new president. Now, God began to tell me this back in March when the pandemic began that Donald Trump's exposure, his day has come. So I figured or I thought and I'm saying, God, are you telling me that he's going to and God began to tell me everything is going to be unveiled, revealed to the world, exposed to the world, his business and all. So. I waited for like five months to see. I said, now, if God is saying this, his taxes will be exposed. Not because it was a big thing to me, but because it was something that would have signified to me that God, you're saying this because you told me he would be exposed. His lies would be exposed. His business dealings would be exposed. So I knew that one of the ways that I could perhaps measure whether this was true that I was hearing, though I had so many other ways to measure it as well. And I was measuring it in those ways as well, because I understood in the things, in the context, in the contents of what God was saying to me, those things were coming true. So those were measuring gauges for me as well. But I knew that if his taxes were revealed, then that would say to me his businesses are being or his business dealings are being exposed. And sure enough, it came out that. I don't know if that was August or September. I can't even remember now that his taxes were exposed. And then I knew God, without a doubt, this is you. So I began to know and understand what God was saying to me regarding him and his reign. But I needed to hear God clearly for him to actually spell it out to me before I ran with it inside of me. And then God spoke to me back in, I want to say, July, sometime in July. That's what you hear on the message that I have out there on the prophetic utterances in relation to the United States president and its politicians. Number three, 
And then, of course, I have a follow up post election message to Donald Trump. I want to say this to people. Church, I don't give a who, a who did whoop what you think about me. Or should I say, like they say today, a whoop that whoop. I don't even care what you think about me. You can just whoop that whoop. It don't even matter. <laughs> Let me do it for you. Whoop that whoop. <laughs> Look it up. Google it. Anyway, those of you who are pure in heart, I can't define what pure in heart is, okay? Uh, for me, I can. For me and God, I can. I can't define what's pure in heart for you. But just make sure that you don't judge and define pure in heart by your own standards, by your own religious Bible. <laughs> that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm talking about the Bible. Your religious Bible can be you. Your religious Bible can be your preacher's mouth, your preacher's voice. Your religious Bible can be anybody that you put in place of God. <laughs> Let God become your religious Bible, not a book in ink, but the God in your heart. God in you, the hope of glory. Some say Christ in you, <laughs> the hope of glory. And if that Christness is not in you, if that hope of glory is not in you consciously, because whether you're conscious or unconscious of it, he's in us all. I know some of y'all don't. How can he be in Donald Trump? How can he be in Hitler? He's in us all. <laughs> he's working through us all. All right, now, all. Oh. <laughs> I know he's with us, he's in us, and he's working through us all. In him, we move, we live, we have our being. <laughs> That's just not some of us. That's just not you, church. <laughs> in fact, if it's you, church, your wretchedness, your wretchedness, wow. If he can live in your wretchedness, Wow, he can live in anybody's wretchedness. Wow, think about that. If God can deal with your wretchedness, church, he can deal with anybody's wretchedness. Whew, these words, um, my adrenaline is pumping. I'm ready to roll. Got a message for you, church. Listen to this. The church is wretched, stank. Tricking, conniving, deceptive, hate-filled, political, pharisaic, rebellious, unrepentant, unsaved, and unashamed. Shame on you, church. Shame on you in all of your wretchedness. Do I need to say any more, church? <laughs> I wonder how he feels. <laughs> I just wonder. I don't know how he feels. He won't even let us know. How does he feel? Hmm. Hmm. Good question. I'll let you know <laughs> when I'm able to put it in words. <sighs> so here we are. I have never seen the church so angry. You're angry at yourselves individually. You're probably angry at God. You almost feel like Jonah after God told Jonah to go to Nineveh and warn Nineveh. Jonah went to Nineveh and warned Nineveh and then God relented. God don't relent from nothing, y'all. But they, listen, that's that's I can't I I don't know what to say to y'all who don't believe in the whole sovereignty of God. Those of you all who who you know who bow to Free Willy, you know Free Willy. All y'all know Free Willy. <laughs> free Willy. That's that free will thing y'all got going on. Listen, Free Willy. If y'all got King Willie on the throne in heaven, then you can't see King Sovereignty. 
See, if King Willie is your throne seater, then you've already unseated, upseated King Sovereignty. I don't know what to tell you, but a uh, church, I think uh, King Sovereignty has now unseated King Willie. <laughs> King Willie has lost his seat. <laughs> King Willie. It was kind of like one. Well, anyway, I ain't gonna say. <laughs> All right. Check this out. So now the church is mad. You're very upset. This may be two messages, you all, because I have some things I want to lay out post message or post election, my post election messages. If this is not two messages, this will have to be an extended message, which I don't really do, but I will do it this time if I have to. Or maybe I'll put it all in one and then I'll split it and make it two recorders. I'm not sure, but I know what I'm feeling and I know what I want to say, but then I've got. I'm going with the flow. I have to go with the flow. I got to go with the flow of where I'm at. I want to get this out. And then I have some verses I want to give you. I don't do verses. I do do verses. Listen, before I knew anything about God, I knew his verses. I came to know God through verses, but I'm not telling you that's how you got to come to know God. What do you mean? You, 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 you. Listen, people, all them folks back way before 1611 came to know God without a problem. Everybody don't need crutches to walk. <laughs> no, listen, your Bible has become your pacifier. <laughs> God is not your pacifier. Your Bible is. <laughs> you ride with your Bible. You sleep with your. I know I used to do it to you. Put your Bible up under your pillow. Hope, hoping that, you know, some type of spiritual osmosis where the Bible will infuse into your mind and into your spirit. You would just, you know, you just, everything you do, you got to have your Bible right there. You just got, you just feel there is a comfort with that Bible. And that's okay. For a period it is, but there comes a time when even the Bible says you need to put them pacifiers and them bottles down <laughs> and take them pampers off and put some big boy draws on and start chewing on some meat. That's what your Bible say, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Leave these beggarly elements and all of this other stuff and go on to some deeper things in God. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the deeper things in God. I'm going over into the deeper things of God. So anyway, if you're going to come to know God, you're going to have to come to know him beyond that Bible. That's why your experiences are so divine. Now, if you're stuck in that Bible, somebody like me, you're going to be like, ain't no way I'm going to listen to him. Why? Because I might say a word or two. I might say, damn, I might say ass. I might say hell. Now, I ain't going to necessarily mess with other certain words. It has to be fitting to the context and it has to be something that I feel a leading to say for whatever reason. See, church, the system, this religion has determined our words. It has determined our behavior. It has determined whether we are free or not or whether we will ever become free or not. You say, now, how the Bible determines whether I'm free or not or whether I'm permitted to be free. Well, wait a minute now. Wait a minute. Those of you all who hear my explosive sometimes when I say or whatever, I don't mean to do that. But I have my gain up on my mic in such a way. And I use a cloud lifter for those of you all who understand cloud lifters. So that cloud lifter. Uh, enables me to have more power in my mic and sometimes I have plosives but I don't mean to have them I do have a de-esser within my setup to stop me from the s 
like that, but some of the, I might, you know, whatever. But anyway, I'm sorry for that. I know that bothers you because it bothers me as well. And I try to do better at it. However, I want you to hear me so clearly and so loudly. You would never ask the person next to you. What did he say? What did he say? Now you might ask that for some of the stuff I'd be saying like, and what, what did he just say? You know, but anyway, those of you who are s- stuck in religion and who are living a lie as though you don't have words that you use, you crazy as all hell. <laughs> you crazy as all hell. Listen to what I'm saying. I believe, listen, well, let me go back to the freedom part. Now, I don't want to mess you up. Like, he just didn't even finish that thought. Well, well, let me finish that thought for you. Like you really want to hear it. You know you don't want to hear it. You know you're going to fight this thing forever. Okay, but anyway, here we go. Freedom. You say, well, how, how did I determine my freedom? This is how. Slaves, obey your master. Wait a minute now. Jesus told me whom the Lord has set free. He's free indeed. He said, I came to preach freedom to the captives. And then you going to tell me, Paul, Paul of all people, you going to tell me, slaves, obey your masters slaves and don't you seek to be loose wait a minute now now this don't make no kind of cotton picking sense what hell was in paul on that day now you going to check the, the internet you googling paul the Apostle Paul, you're Googling him in his Saul days. You're Googling him in his Paul days. Why? You trying to figure out if he was like like George Washington. What you mean? What you mean? They had slaves. Hold it right there. <sighs> Are you telling me that, Paul? I ain't told you nothing. But anyway, listen, he, I don't know. I don't know, y'all. I don't know. All I know is Paul said, slave, if you a slave, don't you seek to be loose. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I don't know what the hell was wrong with Martin Luther King because he was all out of the will of God. Because hmm? all he was trying to do is break them chains off us. I don't even know what. Now, what no devil. What no devil like the Harriet Tubman devil. Whoa. You better stop it. He called Harriet Tubman a devil. Uh, somewhat. But only if I subscribe to your ideology, to your theology, to your religion, to the God that you're twisted on, <laughs> to the God that you're... Token, smoking, <laughs> but I don't subscribe to him. I don't toke or smoke on him. Don't do that. No, not on him. <laughs> now you're talking about, did he just say he's, that ain't your business. But anyway, all right, check this out. <sighs> Slaves obey your master, Paul. My freedom will not be determined by you. I am in the confines of my podcast setting in my recording studio. In being in my recording studio in my podcast setting, I am having spiritual godly conversations to a people who are hungry for something more and something greater. I am no longer going to dummy down what God has given me in order to fit in your religious cocoon. (laughs) Not one of you hidden cusses can even show me a list as to what's a cuss or who's a cusser. (laughs) Cusser. Jesus was calling people snakes and vipers and all of these things. He was a cusser (laughs) of his day. I would perhaps be seen as a cusser of your day, but I gives a hooty woot. 
<laughs> In other words, John, what does he mean when he says hooty hoot? <laughs> I gives a damn. <laughs> hey, it's what it is. I've asked God and I've I've struggled saying, God, look, you know we don't hide. Me and you don't hide. I don't hide. I know you see all things. You know all things. You knew me. You had every one of my days written down in the book before there was ever one day ever written. Every moment of my day, every situation that will come in my life, every experience that will come in my life that will form me into where I am today. You knew it. Not only did you know it and you weren't sitting by passive, but you were actively orchestrating all of it. So I don't need to hide anything from you. Now, God, help me because I need to know whether I need to take this out or that out of my recordings during my editing. Because, again, one hour may take four to five hours for me to edit because I want it to be as perfect as I can because I want to present it to the people. The Bible says everything that you put your hands to do, do it as unto the Lord and do it with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, all your might. And that's what I do. I do it with that in mind. So I want it to be as perfect as I can get it in the moment. Not saying that it's a perfect message that I put out there, but perfect for where I am in that moment with that particular recording or topic and I've asked God should I pull this back God should I pull that back and I would hear God said no continue continue and I struggle with it I do struggle with it however my intentions and my motives are correct and again I say words are what they are words we're putting all of these crazy weights on words and saying words of this or words of that if words form like you all say they form then explain to me why you can't form who your president will be explain to me church why you couldn't form the true words that would have put forth the president that you chose explain to me why you couldn't get your prophetic words correct. Now I'm not calling you all false prophets. Some are, I'm not calling you false prophets. I'm not going to say you're false prophets. I'm going to say many of you are just misled and you're so religiously deformed and conformed. You're so religiously demonic not saying you're a devil because I don't believe in devils, but you're religiously demonic. You have a religious demonic influence upon your thinking, upon your spirituality. <laughs> and it's causing you to hear perhaps what God meant for you to hear. Because again, there is in the book of Kings in first Kings chapter 22. Some of you should read that first King chapter 22 and second Chronicles chapter 18 read. Okay. First King and first Chronicle. They are really the same story, but you have two different people recording them at two different time periods. So Chronicles, it goes back and it, it restates if you want to put it that way, at a different time period, the things that took place during the time that first Kings or the Kings speak of. So when you're reading Chronicles, you're basically reading the same time period of Kings. It took me some years to understand that I had no one to teach me. And those that I looked up to, they weren't even where I was. So I couldn't even get them to teach me, but I sat in Germany in Hanau, Frankfurt, Germany in 1994. And God taught that to me in 1994, showed me how to read the Bible. Okay. That doesn't mean that God is in total agreement with the Bible. What do you mean? He's not in total agreement with the Bible. I said, that does not mean that God is in total agreement with the Bible because he don't, he, 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 he can't, he, he don't, he don't 
I, I know what it should say. He does not, but I'm going to say this here. I'm going to say it like this. God, he don't take back nothing. Yeah, but the Bible says he turned time back. That's what the Bible says. Yeah, but the Bible says he was going to kill Hezekiah and then Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and God gave him 15 more years or whatever, how many, ever many more years God gave him. That's what the Bible says. See, we read it as though God be sitting up here like with no blueprint and God just gave us a blank slate in life and said, y'all go fill it out. And whatever y'all do, I'll work it out because it all works together. So I work it out for you. Okay. I figure something out. Me and Jesus will sit up here and figure something out. Even we got to stay up all night. <laughs> God who never sleeps nor slumbers got to stay up all night. <laughs> Dog. God going to have a hangover tomorrow. I don't want to be at the judgment seat of God on tomorrow after he done sat up all night trying to Fix and figure out another way to work your mess into his perfect plan for you. In fact, I thought he didn't have a plan. Why? Because you say you have a blank slate and you feel your own future out. You determine your own destiny. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Wow. Well, though, there goes the purposes and plans of God. Oh, well, mm, says the church. So anyway, let me go back to what I'm saying. There's a lion spirit spoken of in first king. And it talks about this lion spirit. And the Bible talks about God sending that lion spirit. <laughs> oh, God sent a lion spirit. No, the Bible can't say that. Listen, again, I say first Kings chapter 22, you read it because I don't want to drown this with this. Why? Because I have some verses I do want to deal with and I don't deal with these verses necessarily. Why? Because I'm understanding for every verse you can get for one thing, somebody else can go and find something. And sometimes in its context and most of the time out of context, twist it. And come back with a retort. I'm not doing a retort for a retort. However, I'm not afraid to do that because I can show you some things that you probably never even saw in the Bible. Ever since the early 90s, I've been doing that with pastors and bishops <laughs> showing and pointing stuff out that they say I've never, ever seen. I remember the first time I spoke in Germany in 94. The first message I gave, I had two pastors come to me and say, I never even knew that book of the Bible existed. <laughs> they ain't all they told me. But anyway, I'm just saying, all right, if you're listening, shout out to you. <laughs> all right. So anyway, God says a lion spirit, God sent, sent, not sense, sent sent a spirit from the Lord did that. It says the Lord put a lion spirit in the mouths of all of your prophets. The Lord put a lion spirit in the mouths of all of your prophets. God, is that what just happened? I don't know, but it was a whole bunch of y'all church folk who said a whole bunch of noise. And now y'all church folks, you backpelling. I'm from South Florida, Broward County. And I know how to backpedal and I know how to backstroke in that water. I know how to dog pedal in that water. I was one of the masters of that water. And I pretty much taught myself. There was one guy who tried to teach me at like 12 years old in a pool in Pompano Beach. But I ended up, and his name was Mike Green. Mike Green, if you're out there, I hope you're doing good, Mike Green. You're a good guy. But for the most part, I taught myself how to swim. I know how to backpedal, and I know how to backstroke. Church, that's what you're doing. You're backpedaling. You're backstroking now. You're trying to go back now. You should go back and do your first works over like it says, but you backstroking. Now you're trying to fix. Now you mad at everybody. Now you want to pick your guns up. Now you want to pull your bullets out. Now you're trying to go into a righteous 
rebellion. <laughs> Boy, y'all know how to write everything, don't you? Y'all twist up everything. You stated it. What God said to me is, he said, don't state what they're stating. You heard, they heard. He said, speak what you heard. <laughs> I'll tell you what I heard on October 26. Because, see, I started hearing all that y'all was saying. Because I was like, for the last 10 months, I've been saying, God, no, probably nine months. I've been saying, God, I don't understand this here. I come across people that I'm not even trying to hear. And then I'll see somebody and I say, well, let me inquire what they're saying. And immediately I'll just shut it off. I'm like, God, nothing. That mess was messing with my spirit or it was messing with my mind. I could not deal with that. It was too messy. And it was the opposite of what God was saying to me. And I'm like, God, what, what is going on? What is wrong with God? Am I missing you? God, God, tell me if I'm missing you because God, I came too far. I don't want God. I should, you know, that's what I'm talking about. I don't feel no waste time. I, you know, I can't, but I'm going to say I come too far, you know, from where I started from, man, please, I ain't trying to miss you now, God. God, listen, I ain't trying to be no prophet, no way. But you done mess with me when I wasn't trying to be messed with. You done mess with me when I didn't even inquire of you who the present, who this president was going to be, this new one. I ain't never inquired of God about no president. And then you throw a pandemic in my lap. And you say, looky, looky. And I'm sitting here now with a pandemic in my lap, trying to find some cloth to put over my nose. I'm all concerned. What is going on? And then you begin to talk to me when my life was in shambles. In my opinion, it was in shambles in the sense that things were not working right. Things in my house were not working right. Things with my kids were not working right now all of my kids at that point were all in the military but things were not working right how I wanted them how I desired them how I saw them working out not so much of how God told me they were working out but how I saw them from my own perspective of how they should work out things were not working out properly in my marriage we were not on the same note but I was living more right and more conscious of the God perspective of things than I had ever. Not that I wasn't before, but I was even the more now. And then you put a pandemic in my lap. And instead of you talking to me about my situations, because usually that's how God gives me the revelations. He'll bring me through a Gethsemane type setting. And then he'll begin to speak to me. And then you begin to tell me all of these things. Now the church feels like a Jonah, a Jonah. <laughs> Probably feel like Job too. God, you don't let the devil come and tear everything up. We, we had going on in the church. <laughs> Look what you done done. Well, I probably can buy what y'all saying, church. If, if Donald Trump is the devil, now y'all would have called him that though. Not me. <laughs> yeah, that's the one who exposed you because God told me he's the one who's going to expose you <laughs> listen to what God said to me in church y'all just got to determine what y'all heard I'm going to tell y'all what I heard church it says you will have a new president the United States will see a new president there will be a new president in this election there will be a new president who will come forth in this election this election will produce a new president. He says, Donald Trump will not continue. Donald Trump will not succeed. He will not see another term in office. His term in office will be complete. Truth must prevail, God says. Truth must truly prevail. 
those of you who understand where my podcast sites are, where my podcasts are located at, you can go to YouTube, The Ordained Heretic. You can go to Sprecher.com, SoundCloud.com. You can go to iTunes. There's another S too. Sprecher, SoundCloud, and there's another one that starts with an S, but I can't think of it right now. But moving on, you can go on to iTunes. You can go on to Deezer.com. You can download these apps too. Most of them have apps, okay? And then you can also go to iHeartRadio. So you can download these things into your phone, your iPad, whatever type pad you have, however you want to listen. If you're driving in your vehicle or whatever, but iHeartRadio, I'm out there. I'm on there. And it doesn't cost you a penny. I'm not charging you anything. I'm paying all of this out of my pocket. I'm doing all of this here. If someone chooses to do something, that's a different story. But I'm not here for the money, you all. I'm here for the sharing. I'm here for the sharing. So anyway, God says to me, truth must prevail. Truth must truly prevail. Truth has come to its point of unveiling. Now, understand, if God was saying church is saying church and was saying church, that truth must prevail. Then we know that Donald Trump is a lie. Okay, he's a lie. He's a liar. But I know, church, that's okay with y'all. I know, I know. He's a liar. If God was establishing truth, how was he supposed to stay on the throne, church? Come on now. God ain't as tricking as you. Truth has reached a point of being unveiled. This is the time for truth to be unveiled. God says people are hungry for change. They're searching for change. They're ready for change. He says change is what the people need. Change is what the people will get. How are we ever going to get change with Donald Trump in office church? How are we ever going to get change with Paula White representing the church in the White House? How? Were we going to stay lily white in that house and then administer to the needs, to the right, to the justice of black folk, darker skinned folks? Church, we put you in there. We put Paula in there or you put Paula in there and you put yourself in there. But that ended up being the problem, not the solution. Church, you're wretched, you're tore up, you're derelict, you're bankrupt, and your season is up. Those of you who hear me, listen to what I'm saying. When I upload the messages to the church, perhaps by the time you hear this, you will have seen them. But some people skip messages. So if you skip the messages to the church in relation to the church in this prophetic session these prophetic utterances listen to it i'm gonna say this here church your expiration date is upon you church your era is over e-r-a and e-r-r-o-r your era in your era is over (laughs) put it however you want to put it you want to put e-r-r-o-r first or e-r-a first It don't matter. Either way, it's going to work. They're vice versa. Your era of error in is over. Your era of error is over. (laughs) Your error in error. It's over. However you put it, you can't flip flop this one. Even though God says this is a season of flip flop. That's why it's time for you to leave the scene, church. God says, as Donald Trump goes, the church goes. (laughs) <laughs> the fate of Donald Trump, God said, is the fate of the church. Well, we all see the fate of Donald Trump. He's wounded. He's very wounded. Church, you're wounded. Now you're mad like Jonah. God, why you had to? God, why did you have to? And then God rebuked Jonah. 
listen, I'm not saying God rebuke you, but somebody needs to rebuke you. Maybe that's what God has me doing right now. <laughs> okay, listen, God says, he says, integrity is still important. How will we ever going to establish integrity with Donald Trump still in the office? He says justice is still important. How are we ever going to get justice people with Donald Trump in the office? He says the people are still important. People, how are you ever going to become important with Donald Trump in office? He says this season is still important. My goodness. This season is still important. Well, what type season is this? Well, go look at some of the messages that I have out there on the pandemic. Just look up under the pandemic and you will see the messages and the messages will talk to you about the type season this is. I have multiple recordings, maybe like five. I'm not sure five or seven. I'm not sure of it speaks specifically specifically of the type season this is see i didn't just hear a prophetic word i heard prophetic words and i heard them in detail how you gonna sit there and talk like you be talking on and god talking to you easily the same way you sit up there so stank and wretched and have God's name written all over everything on your license plate, on your necklace, on your palm, on your wrist, on on your T-shirts, on your house, on everything. That's how I can do it. Why? Because God is not coming for the vessels that, well, let me, let me rephrase that. Christ died for all. But if you think that God is only interested in in the seemingly external cleaned vessels, you got God all monked up. You got God all monked up. See, you're concerned about the outer, but God is concerned about the inner. It's not my words that make or break me. It's your religion that makes or breaks whether you hear me. <laughs> Don't get caught up on the words because if that's the case, you're fired and you're fired and you're fired. Why? Because God knows all the words you be saying in your house when folk ain't round in your heart. And I can say damn or had. Oh, no, me damn or or as, and I can say some other word as well, or words as well. And God will see them with a different weight in relation to my motives and intents. <laughs> Whereas you, you won't have to say nothing. All you got to do is think something in your heart. And that's enough right there. The venom in your heart the motive and the intents of those thoughts in your heart are more damning than the words that came out of my mouth. Cause the Bible says, Jesus says, it says that Jesus says, you see this one, this one went down more righteous than this one. This one did more than this one. This one gave, gave this big amount and this one gave this small amount, but this one who gave this small amount went down more right, more justified or however you want to put it than this one. Why? Because this one gave out of his abundance. This one gave out of their heart. Listen, it's the heart that's important. It's where the heart is. It's where the motive is. It's where the intention is. It wasn't that David was squeaky clean because he wasn't. So much so that God said, you can't even go and build my temple. Yet at the same time, it does state that David was a man after God's heart. Oh, your horse is God. You got that all twisted up according to the standards of the church, God. Because God, I mean, the church say hey, you can't have, you can't be committing adultery and you can't be murdering nobody. That's why they all about abortion, because you can't be murdering nobody. And then you're going to have David sleep with that lady. 
and fine indeed she must have been. But he had to kill her husband. And and, and what kind of message you pulling, God? Because you brought a pure breed out of that woman who was in adultery with David. And, and, and that baby was Solomon. You couldn't have been with that, God. Because the church say, and the church say, and the church say, and God is probably saying to hell with what the church say. <laughs> that boy done sat there and said, God said to hell with what the church say. Lord, have mercy. Mm, to hell with what the church say. All right, watch this him. Watch this him. No wonder when they brought, had the nerves to bring the church had the nerves to bring the adulterous woman to Jesus without even bringing her hug, that man, that other later hug me. <laughs> Why they only brought that woman? Did they already stone the man? Well, since you're not supposed to have respect of persons, then they were in wrong. Why? Because they didn't stone the woman too. Cause the Bible says stone both of them. Or is it that they let him go? Cause you know, he was the president. <laughs> He, he, he was Donald Trump. He was he was he was Mike Pence. <laughs> he was William Barr. <laughs> uh, he was Trump's lawyer. <laughs> not, not 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 that one. I'm talking about that one. I'm talking about your secular lawyer. <laughs> okay, wait a minute. Let me get back to that. So they brought the woman caught in adultery to Jesus. Now, surely Jesus was supposed to pick up the first stone and throw it, or at least pick up a stone and throw it. And he didn't. And he did. How did they think Jesus was going to throw a stone at her when God had already blessed David in his adultery with a baby called Solomon, who wrote the book of Proverbs and Ecclesiastes and Sons of Solomon? What, 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 what? is we think we got God all mixed up. We just some monked up people. Really, it's y'all church. I ain't monked up no more. I'm out of that. Yeah, <laughs> that's y'all. That's y'all. That's y'all. So y'all all monked up church. I don't know if y'all received the lying spirit or what. I don't know what y'all received. All I know is this season is important. Did you think God was going to walk over all that deaf church? Do you see what this virus is doing to people, church? What in the hell are you thinking? Let me say that again. What the hell is the church thinking? Do you think God is going to walk over all of this death? Do you know, church, what you're doing? You're helping to permeate death throughout this world. Now, the sovereignty of God is at work in this stuff, and God is doing what God is doing. Yet, at the same time, your motives and your intentions are not on the, the, the lives and the souls of people, as you say. Because so many lives and so many souls are being lost. Do you not know that when you strengthen the hands of Trump, when you hold his hands up like the children of Israel held up Moses' hands when they were in battle? When you're holding his hand up and call yourself praying for this mind, M-A-N-D. What the? I don't know where y'all church get all this stuff from. Mind, and y'all don't even care to fix it. Mind of God. Trump ain't no more a man of God than Al Capone. Come on here, man. He ain't no more a man of God than Hitler. He just didn't get the opportunity that Hitler did to do as much as Hitler did. <laughs> Giving him four more years, he would have accomplished that, perhaps. <laughs> but uh, God sets up kings, and he sets up one and puts down another. Well, if your Bible says he sets up one and puts down another, and he just put down one, what in the hell are you fighting for? Don't you know in the book of Acts, he said, be careful how we fight, lest we find ourselves fighting God. What is you fighting, church? You going to bring God to the Supreme Court? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. You already thought you did that by them self-chosen, stacking folk thinking like you. You will listen, you all, those of you who hear me, remember what I say. 
if the church would have if Donald if the church would have succeeded, we would have been in a world of trouble. You all are focusing on Donald Trump. No, it was really the church's victory, not Donald Trump's victory. Donald Trump is the puppet. God is talking to me. Okay, people, Donald Trump is the puppet. The church is the puppeteer. The church controlled Donald Trump. If Donald Trump won office, you all say we probably would have become a communistic country. No, think further than that. If Donald Trump would have became president, the church would have made this divided states of America a one religion state. And they would have began to do the crusades all over again. Do you all know the crusades in your history? The crusades where Christians went around killing up everything that wasn't looking like them, talking like them and believing like them. The church was going to bring us into an era of not just a one world dictatorship, but a one world order of religion. Listen. They were setting it up and they thought that they had the prime target, Donald Trump. They thought that they had the trophy. That's why they made him their king. The children of Israel, didn't they want a king? Didn't we, they want to make a king like the other nations? Isn't Donald Trump trying to play out like the other nations? <laughs> people you need to see what's going on no i could not see all of this here god revealed this to me during this pandemic i don't read books you all i've tried to purchase books to read them and i just can't open them and read them literally i cannot open and read them i cannot do it i cannot do it i cannot do it it's just not in me we're talking now 20 something years i can't do it it's just me and god so when you hear me you're not hearing books you're hearing god the only book that I've really read in the last 15 years is the book, book, a few books dealing with history, church history, trying to understand church history. Really, it was Bible history. I was trying to understand. I don't care about church history. I don't study Martin Luther and Calvin and all of them folk. I don't study none of them. I ain't never studied none of them. It's boring to me. It don't make sense to me. I just know one thing. The church is wretched. That's enough for me to live on. That's enough for me to preach and teach on. The church is wretched. That much I know. That much the world knows now. So anyway, the church is upset now. You're upset because, you know, you did not get what you desired. You did not get the man that you desired. You did not get the outcome that you desired. You're hurt. You're offended. You're wounded. I understand. I don't feel sorry for you, but I understand. <laughs> I never say that again. I don't feel sorry for you, but I understand. Let me say that again. I don't feel sorry for you, but I understand. <laughs> you don't feel sorry for yourself. In fact, you're mad at yourself and you're mad at God and you're mad at your your congregants, pastors and bishops. Why? Because you lied to them. Now you want to blame what you said that God said. You want to blame it on the people and tell the people it was because you didn't pray hard enough. It, it was because you weren't praying from your heart. It was because you didn't fast when we told you all to fast. It was because you all didn't cut off the TV. It was because you all didn't show enough offering you know it was because of this and it was because of that it was because of this and that and that. wait a minute wait a minute those folks followed y'all who opened your mouths and said what you said <laughs> i can see god in that too though you see some people aren't gonna see it they're just gonna say you all were liars you just lied and blah 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 no i can see god's sovereignty working in that See, God put you all on display, church. See, Donald Trump, you all chose Donald Trump, but God told me Donald Trump put you all on blast. The church was put on blast, okay? Donald Trump put you on blast. So when Donald Trump began to be exposed, the church, you church, hiding behind your king, you became exposed as well. See, Donald Trump's exposure is now your exposure, which is what God told me. Remember, I said this right here, church, Donald Trump will turn on the church. Remember, I said this church, Donald Trump will turn on the church. Remember, I said this church, Donald Trump will turn on the church. Why do you say that? Because God told me, God told me you would. I think it was October 
I'm not going to, I'm not, don't hold me to this, but I think it was October the 15th, but don't hold me to it because I can't really remember it. And I don't want to pull that up and get out of my flow right now. But church, the very king that you chose is the very king that God used to expose. <laughs> I didn't cuss him. He's going to sit up here and use all the words he used. And then one of the same record going to talk about something like God. How can dirty water flow out of a good fountain? How can dirty and clean water flow out of the same fountain? The same way your lying behinds been up in that church house and on these pool pits and on these podiums and at these mics doing it for years. That's how. <laughs> oh, y'all so mad now y'all want a civil war my goodness i thought y'all were just fighting for this woman to get put up in the supreme court and all these other clowns to be put in the supreme court in order that you all could save babies and now you oh, i'm sorry not save babies save lives saves save lives now you want to have a civil war because you mad. Now y'all talking about all this stuff. Your people are out there posting now saying that you all are warriors for the Messiah. And, and, and someone posted, yes, and I am a warrior for the, I'm a, I'm a warrior like the Messiah, Jesus himself. Read the book of Revelation. That's what he said. If you have defined God by that book called Revelation, you is as on as much crack as the writer of Revelation. <gasps> he just said the, the, the man that God was on. You don't know who the hell wrote that book. Folk don't even understand it either. They, listen, y'all sit up here and listen to John Hagee. John Hagee sitting right now coming out wherever he was out of his bunker, out of his COVID-19 bunker, sitting up here trying to catch his own breath. Now, he going to come out just like Donald Trump because the pride of the church is so great. Read, read the book of Jeremiah if you don't believe me. <laughs> I ain't saying it because Jeremiah said it. I'm saying it because God told me. He said the pride of the people, the pride of the church, the pride of America is so great. It's so great. John Hagee Sr. is too great in his pride to come down like Chris Christie. He's coming out swinging like Donald Trump. Trust me, he going to have a poster as long as I-95 is full of nothing but Revel talking about the book of Revelation, the book of Daniel, the 12 headed monsters and the kings and this and that and that and the lads and this and that and the judgment and the rake throne and the lake of fire. And he, ah, you be heating me up, John Hagee. You heat me up every, you know, y'all, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to mess with y'all a little bit here. I got to, I got to go off script a little bit. I, I told you, I ain't even going to say script. I'm going to say script. I got to go off script a little bit here. Now I told y'all people I wasn't here. Oh, I'm not going to make this a short one because I want to get all of this out. So I just got to roll with it. Okay. We're going to roll with it. And I'm going to probably have to just make two recordings out of it because I still hadn't touched the verses that I want. But, Anytime I hear John Hagee, you know, talk or I see him on TV, I just start feeling hot. All I just like, <laughs> oh, you know, I, uh, you know, I mean, I'd be feeling like initially this how I'd be feeling this. I'd be feeling initially when I'm, you know, flipping the TV or whatever. I'd be feeling like this here, you know, like. <laughs> But as soon as I turn the TV and it hit a channel with John Hagee on it, I start, all of a sudden, I start hearing fire. And I'm like, now I live in the South. Why in the hell am I hearing embers burning like I got a lit fireplace? And then it dawns on me, I'm looking at John Hagee. And then the more you listen to him, you start hearing, and he go to speaking on hell, and you start getting scared, and then you start hearing all kind of stuff like. <laughs> no! <laughs> Did 
Dang. I'm scared now. <laughs> I'm so, whoa, that was a that was a hot ember there. Oh shoot, that ain't getting hot, man. Let me get up out. Let me turn the turn that TV. <laughs> turn that TV. Turn that TV. Get it off of here. <laughs> Ooh, John Hagee, a mess your day up. You started with hallelujah. <laughs> you end with hollering. <laughs> Listen again. <laughs> Man, that's some monk of stuff there, y'all. We got to stay off that crack. That crack, that crack is whack. <laughs> you know, what's that, that, that guy that, that, um, Washington DC mayor, or was he a Maryland mayor? You know, mayor, mayor, anyway, whatever the black mayor was in, in Washington DC or whatever. Um, and he said, um, crack is, he didn't, I don't know if he said crack is whack, but he said, drugs are not good and he says just say no to drugs and then they come and show him standing up in a hotel room i think he was standing up in a hotel room hitting that crack pipe That's the church right there. That crack is bad. It'll have you seeing Satan. It'll start hearing, get you to start hearing babies. How them babies, how them babies ended up in hell? Y'all heard them babies screaming. And how they ended up in hell? I thought you both be 12 years old before you went to hell. Who the hell gave you a date? <laughs> I don't even understand that. We be giving folk dates, you know. Okay, now on July 19th, you should be about 13 years old, right about then in, 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 in 2020, you're going to start being held accountable. So what you do is you get all your sins out before you 13 and you're good. You wretched church, you wretched church. <laughs> I wish I would have known that if I was 13 though. But anyway, all right, here we go. God says, let me go back to the deaths. Somehow, Church, you thought that Donald Trump was supposed to be your savior. Church, how was he supposed to be your savior when church, he was the one. Oh, Lord, failing to save the world. He was the one that you all were using. The very one who was watching millions of people right now today. I think we're at over 10 million Americans who suffered from being infected by the virus. And that's only the ones that were counted. And if it is true that we're at least three times higher than what is being reported, we're really somewhere around 40 million or at the least 30 million who's been infected. We have over 200 and 40,000 deaths, and those are only the honest ones that were counted. Forget the fact that it's probably three or four times, five times, six times, seven times higher than that. And you all are sitting up here, church, the truth telling church, the bearers of truth. You're trying to tell the world that it's all fake. You dumb blind bats how you gonna call the church bats blind bats because god told me the church is blind bats 
They're as blind bats. You're flying blindly, church, and you're leading blindly. And the Bible says if the blind leads the blind, they'll both end up in the ditch. And church, you have your followers in the ditches. You have the president in a ditch. You're all in the same bind. You're all exposed for your error, your errors. And now you're all being removed off the scene. See, there was no way that God could bring this to what you church wanted it to become. Why? Because God says this season will establish principle. You know, Donald Trump don't live by no darn principle. He says this season will set principle. You know, Donald Trump don't live by no principle. He says this season will make principle important. You know, principle isn't important with Donald Trump. Hell, church, you know, it ain't important with you. He says it will make principle important. This season will make principle important to the people in the way that it should be. You know, you all would have never established principle. He says this season is establishing the difference. This season is establishing the difference between what is right and what is wrong. This season is making right, right. He says this season is making what is wrong, wrong. We're going to stop right there. And the only reason I'm going to stop right there, because I'm going to add a message number two to this here so that it won't be too extendedly long where people will have a problem in following it. So we're going to end here, but I'm going to give the final closing post-election message in relation to the church on the next one. Thank you.